In order to investigate the effect of length of the pendulum on its period, you will need to accurately measure the period of the pendulum. The period of a pendulum is the time it takes to complete one full cycle. It doesn't matter when you start the timing, as long as you stop timing when the pendulum has completed a full cycle. So we could measure the time starting from the highest point until it gets back to the highest point. That would be one full cycle. Or we could start the timing when it passes the bottom, moving right, so now, and then stop it when it's moving to the right again. So that would be from now till now. When timing a cycle, you want to count zero at the beginning of the timing and you want to count one at the end of one cycle. And those are the times when you want to start and stop the timer. So I'm going to do the timing from the highest point over here. So ready, set, zero, one. Okay, so I press the button on zero to start it. I press the button again on one to stop it. We can also measure the period starting and stopping the timing when the pendulum is at its lowest point, let's say um, moving to the right. So now, 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 zero, one. And I got a time of 1.38 seconds. This isn't an exact value because I probably didn't start and stop the timer at exactly the right moment. This creates uncertainty in our measurement, and the real value of the time could have been a little bit more than this, or a little bit less than this. We will measure the time for 10 cycles and then divide our measurement by 10 to find the time for one cycle. Here's how we do the counting and the timing for 10 cycles. And I'm going to start and stop my timing at the highest point. So ready, set, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that was 13.84 seconds.